Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty and trust. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Welcome back, Senators, to episode 34 in my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we fought a hasty war against the remnants of Alaria and their allies, the Order of Enlightenment, with the single goal of seizing the lost relic world that lies on the edge of our galaxy to the west. The war was fairly quick, lasting just slightly over two years before the remnants gave in to our demands, and as reparations, we sent the Order of Enlightenment a heavy sum of energy credits, consumer goods, and some alloys, as they were only fulfilling their obligations to their allies. We also finished construction of the Ringworld Frame at the newly renamed Hellas System, in which we've now commissioned construction of two Ringworld segments to be built into the frame. It's going to take about five years for construction to finish, and about ten for the overall Ringworld to be set up. The Senate have also wrapped up their debates regarding uplifting the Tepidorans, the species the Primitives, at Shutra, and whether or not we should give residency status to those within the Pax Romana. So let's take a look. So the first one, do we uplift the species at Shutra? There was a 71.6% saying yes, they will join us. And a 28.4% saying no, they are irrelevant. So a pretty big majority, I would say, there. It actually has pretty interesting consequences, which we'll talk about a little later into the episode. And it's because it's not an instant thing that we can do. It's going to take a little while. So the next vote was for should we grant residency status to those within the Pax Romana? And there was a 64% majority saying yes, it's time to coexist. And a 36% saying no, they are beneath us. So this one is also kind of a little bit interesting and complicated. So to catch you guys up, the Pax Romana consists of obviously the Roman Empire, the Tyrene Republic, which the species belonging to are the Hasian, the Veldenor Zealots, the species of which are the Ildar, and the Colden Consortium, the species of which are the Colden. The only species that have actually made it into Roman Empire's territories and borders are the Colden, and we've currently been using them as slaves. Now, in between episodes, seeing the vote, I have now given them the residency status as decreed by the Senate. So we'll have to see if whether or not they start promoting up in some of those slave jobs they would have had. So slaves all, always take worker class jobs. Now they can take specialist jobs. I think they can actually even take ruler jobs. As a residency status, they're not allowed to take leadership positions, but I think they can take ruler jobs. I'll have to, we'll have to check. I'm not too sure on that. But the difference between leaders and rulers, rulers are the ones that are working the capitals of planets and things like that. But leaders are the ones where you actually designate them as a governor, an admiral, a general, or whatever the case may be, scientists and so on. So previously, the Colden were our slaves. We had genetically modified them before, where they were actually, we kind of got rid of the unflinching traits. So these are this warrior race, essentially, that didn't really like being slaves. They were unflinching in the face of adversity, uh, which meant that they had a lot of political power as slaves, which meant political power translates to affecting stability a lot. So their happiness counted for more as a slave towards um, the stability than regular slaves did. So we kind of gene modified that out <laughs> pretty early on. Um, although there are some, you know, kind of hanging around that still have it. So ideally we'll now kind of apply the template up to everybody and they have residency status. So they may move out of that kind of worker pool. They might move into the specialist pool. Let's have a look at their traits actually. So they have uh, technicism. So they're really good at engineering, but not so good at physics and society. But their engineering carries so much weight that it's not so bad, actually, to put them in a science job. Army health, leader lifespan, food from jobs. So to be honest, they're not really suited to really working anything, specifically other than perhaps scientific jobs. And even then, they come with a small drawback. drawback. So we'll have to see how that kind of plays out. Now for the others, the Ildar, the Hasian, we haven't encountered them. 
they haven't come into our territory. So I've sent out a migration treaty with the Tyrene Republic. Don't know if I did with these guys. Let's offer them one as well. So it costs us a little bit of influence, but nothing too dramatic. So nothing crazy. So send that out as well. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything. Now for the uplifting at Shutra, this one's actually kind of interesting. So if we click our obs observation post, we had been previously observing these guys. We were doing kind of um, the aggressive, not the aggressive, we were doing, what were we doing? Indoctrination, where we we're kind of like making their ethics align with ours so that, that if we ever did uplift them, they'll already be kind of ethically aligned with us. And that was changing so often that I ended up just going back to passive. So what we need to have happen is we need the policy for native enlightenment allowed. So native enlightenment currently has been prohibited, but we'll allow it now, as decreed by the Senate. But I still can't do the technological enlightenment, and that's because um, their ethics aren't fully aligning with us, I think. They are, oh, no, sorry, yeah, they are currently fanatic xenophobes. So we're, ze we're xenophobic, but whatever ethics they've taken on has made them fanatic. And because they're fanatic xenophobe, they just can't be enlightened. So we have to kind of try do indoctrination again, and then maybe over time, ethics will shift back to where we are, and then we can try it. So it could take a while, it could be really quick, I'm not too sure. So that's essentially what's going on with them. And I suppose actually while we're here, we could take a look at their species and see what they might be useful for. So they have the semi-mechanized, giving them habitability and leader lifespan, but it means they cost more consumer goods. Healing factor, which gives them, if they become livestock, they uh, provide more food. They actually have more food upkeep as a result. So that's two traits I'm not too happy about. <laughs> uh, better unity from jobs though, not by much, but a little bit because they're sympathetic. And conservationist, so that kind of counters the upkeep of their pop consumer goods 30% and then it's reduced by 10%, okay? And then they're unruly. So to be honest, not that, not that interesting in terms of uh, nothing special about them where we're like, we need some of these to be working within our empire, but the Senate has decreed it and so it will be. Um, now the more interesting thing, the more complicated thing about taking them on is they'll get a little city state that is their own. And when that happens, they become pa part of the Pax Romana which is gonna like slam our cohesion down a little bit, which will lower our leveling up process. So it's gonna slow us down to getting to level four. Now what we could do is we could just fully on integrate them if we wanted to and just get their world. Um, we can actually do that right now with our other subjects. So of course the Veldenor are originally our subjects, so we could do an integration of them for 284 influence. They will, this territory will just be absorbed. We could do the same with the Colden. We can't do the same with the Tyrene because we actually took them in under equal terms. You may remember that originally we vassalized them, but to start the hegemony, we needed someone who was on equal terms, not someone who was a subject. At least I believe so. So we kind of lifted them out of the vassal state status and then just incorporated them in as an ally. So that's why currently they aren't eligible for that. But we could just kick them out and bring them back in. If we did that, then Cohesion will take another big hit. So maybe we'll do this in the future, but right now, just wanted to kind of explain the situation. It's kind of complicated, but hopefully you guys get that. Very last thing to mention then for what's been going on. In terms of when I was looking at the different statuses for leadership and how people live within the Empire, I set their rights to also give them a good living standard of decent conditions. And then I changed the human living standard where are we? To give us social welfare. So we have a little bit of a better living situation than everyone else. We have full citizenship, so now citizens are eligible to get social welfare. And as a result, consumer goods, has the upkeep per pop has gone up, but the happiness has also gone up as well. Uh, which means, potentially, pops could be working more efficiently. All right, so hopefully that's caught everything up. Uh, the only renaming I've done, like I've said in the beginning, is Hellas. So we've started commissioning the building of the two ring world sections here. It takes 1500 days. Can't build the other ones. You have to wait. You can only build three at a time. So we're building this and this. And then we're also still building the mega shipyard over at Bernard Star. So that's still ongoing at the moment. So my goals, you might be wondering what the goals are lately. You know, if we've no major crisis or major threat, what I'd like to do is see the Veldenor Zealots relink their territory back up. So they've lost all of this territory to the ancient eradicators and the ancient eradicators is really hard to see but they also own territory within the central core 
which I would like to take, um, basically because they have a continental world here of 25 slice that they occupy right now. And if we went to war with the Ancient Eradicators, it would be a total war, which means we could just go in there and take these things straight off them. Uh, we can actually see their fleets and ships as well. I guess because of sensor range. Uh, they seem decent. They're gaining traction. This seems to be a common theme across the galaxy right now. It's like the AI empires, let's say. The other empires are starting to catch up with our technology and ca catch up with our military might. It's starting to like... The cur... <clears throat> Excuse me. The curve is starting to bend upwards a bit more rapidly. Like, uh, what's the word? Exponentially, I guess. They're starting to become more powerful now. Which is good to see. They're starting to catch up. In general. And uh, the other thing I'd like to do then down here is with the Cold Consortium is to get some territories and give it to them. So I don't think I'll be going to war right away with the Ancient Eradicators, depending on what happens. But that's kind of something I think will be the right thing to do. Is make sure the Veldener kind of get their territory back. They used to own this. They splintered into the Eldar Republic. And then they got taken out by the Ancient Eradicators. So I'd like to kind of give that back to them. I think they also had a previous war with the Pub Privateers. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then as well, in case you're wondering, the Kosher Trade League are not allied with the Ancient Eradicators or anything like that. They just happen to be the same color because of the Union's map mode. Uh, same with the Remnants of Alari Alaria. They just all happen to be red. That isn't one big alliance or anything. <clears throat> it's just the way it's kind of laid out. Okay, so over at uh, Nemesis, the newly named Nemesis, named after the Greek god of revenge, um, we have renamed the Star Throne to Nemesis. So I've moved some pops here, just the basics, and then we're going to set up some planetary administration, start getting some foundry arcologies up and running, maybe switch it to something else in future, I don't know. But for now as well then, remove all those ruined arcologies and then start rebuilding these. So something I'd like to do is a project to move all the pops we can out to this place and really fill it up fast and take all the pops as many as we can out of the mechanicum sector where the previously the site 10667 override was i haven't really specialized those worlds and they're not really doing that much so i think we should just take all the pops not all of them but take almost all the pops off of it bring them up to nemesis and then as we start populating these places out again just specializing them as mining worlds to feed in the minerals into these different arcologies because of course we have now also got the relic world that's out here and we have a scientist on the way to figure out the story. So I think we'll read this story now. I actually haven't read it um, as it stands. The excavation on this planet has not been completed yet. And this is what we fought our war for. Alright, so isolated from the rest of the galaxy, the lost planet was clearly once home to an advanced civilization. The ruins are still scattered across the surface. But no advanced forms of life can be detected from orbit. Where did they all go? So this was worked by a different scientist, and we're going to be taking over once we get ours out there. So, Chapter 1. Our archaeological expedition on Tenrathen 3A has pr uh, produced the first tangible results. The species that previously lived on this planet called themselves the Volnars, and are estimated to have disappeared from the face of the planet about 500 years ago. It was also conclusively confirmed the Volnars did not evolve on Tenerthen and arrived as colonists from a different world. But what is especially strange is that they did not appear to possess any hyperdrive technology to do so. Whether they utilized some kind of sleeper or, or generation ship technology or were transported by some other advanced alien culture remains unclear. <clears throat> the Severance Okay, so the scientists at the time reports a major finding on the planet. They have recovered logs of a large-scale scientific and political conference that took place shortly before the collapse of the Volnar colony. It was, it was called to discuss the event called the Severance. The Volnar never achieved hyperdrive technology. Instead, they discovered a wormhole in their home system. The wormhole connected them to Tenrathen, where they discovered a pristine world ripe for colonization. Over the years, Various nation states and corporations from their home planet claimed parts of the planet as their colonies. This all came to an abrupt end when the wormhole suddenly collapsed, the event they called the Severance. The colonists were facing great uncertainty. Although the planet was mostly self-sufficient, it relied heavily on off-world management and international treaties signed on the homeworld. This meant that the planet was run more like a business venture than that of a nation. Without that, and left to their own devices, different factions started vying for dominance. Layers upon layers, our, archaeolo our, archaeolo bleh, our archaeologists on the planet have encountered something very surprising, another archaeological dig. This dig site was operated by Volnor colonists who seemed to have been researching artifacts left behind by someone else. 
It appears the Volnars were not the first ones to come to this world, but information regarding their predecessors is scarce. It's strongly suggested that they weren't originally from this planet either, but there isn't enough material for proper study. Hmm. And now we need to go back and continue the site. That's pretty interesting. So to recap, a civilization came through the wormhole that didn't have hyperdrive technology, came through the wormhole, landed on the planet, had some difficulties setting up, wormhole was severed, and now they're kind of stuck on their own. Then they found a dig site, and they also found that there was a civilization there before them who seemed to not originate from the planet either. So that's all we know. Okay. Let's let time play. We'll keep it on normal speed for now, just as we catch up. Lots of things are probably going to happen as we just hit the day tick. So two factions were founded. Research project and we finished the Void Cloud study. So uh, the Void Clouds are stewards among the cosmos, uh, of the cosmos. Once human astronomers knew what to look for, they found traces of Void Clouds everywhere. Formed at the dawn of creation, they stood watch as stars were lit and young planets formed. Now they drift, quasi-conscious, agglomerations of inanimate matter from the earliest hours of time itself, afloat between dying stars and breaking worlds. They are a constant reminder that we're but a po small part of something greater. So we could be cloud destroyers, or we could consider this humbling, getting a 10% boost to physics. Let's do that. <clears throat> physics jobs. The migration for the Tyrian Republic was accepted, and the migration for the Veldenor was accepted as well. That's good. Um, so currently, from our previous war, we've got a lot of our fleets heading back. Uh, back to Saul, I think, and back to where the mega shipyard has been stationed and built. Devastation. We've come across yet another broken world. Brief scans. So this is again for the Vazarins. It doesn't really matter anymore. Okay. And we're going to be waiting until we get a message of the indoctrination taking effect on the Tebadorans, and then we can hopefully New switch them around. Discovered. Ah, we got the technology for Xenotronium rounds. These are the rounds fired by the Vazarin. So this is giving us kinetic weapons damage 10%. Alright, good. What to get now? Super, uh, super Supratanic habitat stabilization systems. Sure. A lot of people want me to get the flagship. I guess it would be nice, but I'm going to go with this one first. The Ambassador of Justice component. Hmm. Ooh, actually, Elgate Insight. Yeah, yeah, let's do the Elgates. So I think we're up to three Insights already. Yeah, three. This will be four. If we get to six, I can just buy buy the last uh, Insight with our currency, the artifacts. It is a lot to spend on just getting one Insight, but I'll do it to finalize the thing, probably. Okay, so for those who aren't aware or didn't see it, um, obviously I was missing episodes for a while. I missed two episodes or two scheduled episodes. Seems to have been pretty detrimental actually to the views on the one that followed. So lesson learned on that. But the idea was I wanted to do a stop and recap episode. And if I, I could have just like re hit record and start talking through everything, but I wanted to actually do a structured kind of plan. And uh, I'm really happy with, with the episode in general. I could have put even more time into it. I would have loved to. But um, it seemed like I didn't want to miss three in a row. All right. We can do technological enlightenment. Whatever happened, they're not fanatic xenophobe anymore. So there we go. Technological enlightenment. An effort is made to rapidly elevate the native civilization to the space age. The time it takes is dependent on their current level. Okay. Oh, and there's actually a bar for it. 2.50 per month. And it has 100. Okay. Um, so yeah, you should definitely go watch it. It's a special episode where we basically go through all of the territories, all of the sectors, all of the planets, you know, some of the events that led us to where we are and things like that. It's just like a deep dive on everything, which is nice for people who maybe are just joining the series or have missed episodes and things like that. It gives you a really good catch up on what everything New means, all the planets and discovered. what the specializations are and things like that. Um, but yeah... At least for now, no more of that for a while. <laughs> I might do one at the very end of the series to recap everything that happened, maybe. Uh, but right now, we're just business as usual, back to the regular three days, uh, three episodes a week. Okay, right, there's so much to get through as well. So generally, I'm taking care of a lot of the unemployment and things here. Should be moving it all out to Nemesis, I think, in future. And then as well to the, of course, we have our world at Titanium, the Ecumenopolis world that is now building 
Galactic Stock Exchange, but there's almost 200 pops up here, 178. We're currently at 1,500 pops. We actually just got a bunch of pops. I wonder is that why right. factions were founded. So two factions were founded. The Popular Vote Movement, Libertarian. It actually just says Ibertarian. I'm guessing Libertarian. And then Anthropocentrism Ethos. These have appeared and gone away through the episodes. I, di I didn't know that you could lose political parties, but we've had these before. Um, but the rest, at the moment, I've changed what we're doing with political parties a little bit. The Asia's Peregrini actually has 131 people, and this is the Xenophile Ethos uh, kind of faction. I'm actually suppressing them right now, just to kind of lower those numbers down as much as I can. And then I'm increasing, I think, the Authoritarians, these ones, the Dominate Romanate, because we've met all of the conditions. Uh, the only condition I changed in between episodes was being a centralized state. So the policy for this was authority stance. We were on none. You could be centralized, gaining extra influence at the expense of uh, Empire Sprawl, which I don't know if, if it even worked or not, because I, I remember clicking it and it didn't seem to change anything. And then federalized authority would have been um, New increasing the cost discovered. of edicts and libertarian ethics attraction and so on. Online. But you actually got administration capacity. So basically we're saying like, we're staying smaller and then we gain authoritarian ethics. We also gain influence. So it's, it's pretty good for what we want in terms of the political factions. This should be growing a lot now. And that just gives us really, really happy pops and lots of influence from it. So uh, generally though, with the suppression and the, the promotion, we're losing about two influence per month than what we were. And the reason we're making 10 is because we have a currently active edict, uh, one of the unity edicts that's giving us a lot. All right. Man, there's so much, so much to cover. It's good to be back, though. I haven't played now in a while because of that week that I spent editing that previous episode. Um, man, everything's like a rare technology now. So science, ne like, I don't feel like I'm going to be building any of these for a long time, these mega structures. But I might just get matter decompressor because I feel like we're going to need it. Tomb world habitability, 20%. Rare technology. Hmm. That is something I think we should probably start investing into, is getting machines on Tomb World so that they can actually mine them. Because minerals are going to be the thing that we need a lot of if we want to keep increasing alloy production, which we do. So let's start working towards that a bit. Okay, let's see if we got gained any new territories down south now. Yes, yeah, so we just took Blorg's Bane. Just to prevent the others from taking it. I'm not going to go any further than that. I think this is fine. Just make some nicer borders here by taking that territory. I've got a construction ship on the way up to Fijon. Our borders are open with the Order of Enlightenment. So I worry that they might just come through and get it. So hopefully we'll get it first. Alright, let's speed things up. So yeah, so this is probably going to be a bit of a more economic fo uh, eco economy focused episode. While we prepare an attack eventually against the Ancient Eradicators. All right, it seems uh, star Cross lovers. It seems that instead of performing his task and representing Roman interests, our envoy, Vivius Carfulenius, Lenus, has fallen for the charms of the Veldenor diplomat. It says Vendenor. It's weird. Did I spell it wrong or did it change? Uh, fearing the repercussions of this transgression, the pair have eloped to the Rigan Commerce Exchange, a nation whose dangerously liberal constitution permits such unions. In doing this, Vivius Carfulenus uh, has forfeited his position as our envoy. However, the loss of control over our own officials has hurt our galactic standing. We must restore our reputation by apprehending this miscreant. Approach them and appeal to reason. If the Regan Commerce Exchange accepts, we'll owe them two favors. The Regan Commerce Exchange? I don't even know where they are. Will it tell me if I do that? Nope. I'm pretty sure they're like really, really small. I thought they were here. That's the Great Zeltic Combine. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I just looked right over them. I don't know. Probably did. Rigor and Commerce Exchange. Oh, well. Uh, or we can say, let it be. The affair will be forgotten soon enough. And then we have a hurt, uh, a negative to our diplomatic weight by 15%. I don't mind owing some favors. It's fine. New technology discovered. The fact that they're so small, I can't even find them. They're probably not that big of a deal. Let's have a look in the empires. Contacts. Sort by name. Rigan 
It's an enclave. They don't even have diplomatic weight. That's really strange. That's why I can't find them. That's really strange. They're not even like a nation, you know? That's the thing. It's just an, it's an enclave. So they don't have any diplomatic weight. They can't do anything with favors. That's a really weird one. Never seen that kind of thing happen. Okay. Well, it's kind of cool though. And at the same time, it's like, oh, they have eloped to this liberal enclave where they can do whatever they want. Interspecies marriage and uh, possibly procreation. All right, cool. Uh, of course, we will return them to you immediately. Oh, okay, right. So we appealed them and they, they're coming back. Great. I guess, yeah, they, they might have not done it. All right, we got our L gate again. So we're up to four L gates now. Insights. Uh, let's do the Tomahawk missiles. That's extreme range. I've also been having a look around all of the different systems out here to try and find some planets that we can consecrate and work towards. But I just can't, I can't find any. It's crazy because, you know, all we need is like, let's see, a monsoon world, a steppe world, a temperate zone, an oasis world, ancient world. We did find an ancient world in Kozier land and territory before. <clears throat> a salt world, industrial graveyard, a Pangaea, Algexes, the planetoid, and the volcanic world. So planetoid is actually in Sol. So we could do that and increase leader lifespan for a long t uh, bit longer. But I haven't I had a really long look around. I was like, there has to be like a volcanic world. So it's basically a molten world that has a special kind of trait. So you can't really identify it just by looking at it. You got to like click into them and see. It takes a really long time. Um, but yeah, I just haven't been able to find one. All right, let's go with Crystal Spear Cannon. It's an upgrade to the things we have already. Let's have a look at that mega structure for the shipyard. See where we're at with it. Alright, 280 days remaining. Not that long left. What the hell is going on? The frame rate in this game is just getting so dodgy now. Uh, the further and further we go. I'm also sending my colony ships to prepare for landing at Hellas. And we've also got some terraforming going on at one of the planets here. This has high quality minerals, lots of mines, so I'm uh, in the process of terraforming it into a continental world through natural means. Of course, we do have the relic available for the last battle, should we wish to just create another Gaia world instantly. Okay, our ships be are being repaired and so on. That's good. So do we have... Yeah, so we can actually see now the observation posts at Shutra. So we're about 20% of the way, or 25% of the way, for the technological enlightenment. And our Pax Romana is going to take a big hit to having them being uplifted. All right, we're at 30,000 alloys stored. We're going to need them, though, as we commission the next upgrades. So let's just queue up these things. All right, cool. Extend our deal to get the extra science. That's good. And we're coming out here to get this system and then this system. Then we're going to give some to the Colden. I wouldn't mind giving them almost everything. In a way. I guess we'll obviously have a planet down here, so we'll keep that. Um, okay, is there anything left for us in the... Oh yeah, the lost planet. Have we begun? Has our scientist made it out there yet? Construction online see which one is on the way. It looks like they might have... They're coming down there. They're on their way to the dig site now. So we have Statia Caninius. She's on the way in her exploration cruiser. That's a pretty interesting looking star. What the hell's up with that? A brown dwarf class L. These cold stars are of the brown dwarf type, which are on the verge of being able to maintain a hydrogen thermonuclear reaction in the core. Their temperature is low enough that metals could exist in the atmosphere. Huh. And an ancient battlefield above it. What do we have? A sulfur world. Close, but no dice. Audaciously, we've had a claim against this from the boss, the Voss city states. It's just crazy how they do that. It's like, don't you realize what you're doing? 
All right, max minerals 5,000. Research speed will be increased by 5% if we do this one. Let's do this then. So that's mass neutronium extraction. Unlocks a, me um, a mega structure, neutronium Giga Forge. Jesus. All right, looking good, looking good. I'm pretty happy about the fact that if we go to war with these guys, then we don't have to worry about claims and things like that. We just get things instantly. All right, we've got the matter decompressor as a potential building or mega structure. Uh, let's get some better weaponry, I guess. Or yeah, let's go with the high level reactors. There's a sing singularity reactor, and then there's also a graviton reactor. I'm guessing this goes into that. This one costs more. Let's just get the one before it first. Even though I'm sure we could just negate it by getting this one. Actually, what is this? Dark matter drawing facility. Dark matter shapers turn energy and consumer goods into dark matter and physics. Huh. Planetary or barrier shield generators. I'm going to get the one that doesn't make any sense at all. Just because it's cheap. It's cheap and oh, people said that it looks really cool when you upgrade it. I want to see what the difference is. All right, we are now boarding up against these guys. Let's get this next one. Are they heading out to it? They are sending a scientist out here. They're moving their ships into our territories. Hmm. All right, cool. All good. Let's have a look at the galactic community. The mega shipyards framework is finished. That's good. So what's left? Eight and a half thousand. This is to get the core. So we can't build ships from this yet, it's just pretty much just the framework is ready to go. Looks really cool actually. And that will give us three different shipyards. I think that gives us something like seven or eight shipyards. Maybe more. I think the final stage gives you 50. So we'll see. Oh, there is a shipyard here already. 10. Wow, we can already make 10 ships from it. That's cool. That's going to be so cool. And then what I'll probably end up doing is getting rid of the Federation fleet at some point in the future. Because it doesn't have jump drives and it's still we still can't put jump drives on them. Which is pretty annoying. As they seem to be just be kind of bugged out. So we'll have to pretty much just remove them and then add completely new ones later. How's everything going on this? The ruined arcologies are being removed. There's still 30 available jobs here. So we could resettle some people if we have any unemployment immediately. Some unemployment on Janus. We named it Janus for from. Actually, I wrote down in my notes. Someone mentioned it. What their name was. Some a few people did mention it, but the first one I saw was from Brady, for suggesting the tidally locked uh, frozen world be named Janus because it was god of duality. That's why. <laughs> An unknown signal. What is this? A weak but inconsistent. Or sorry, a weak but insistent signal transmits on repeat in the Echochromia system. The surveyor has pinpointed its source emanating from within the mouth of a destabilized subs rift, subspace rift at the system's edge. Hmm, I'm not a fan of unknown signals. There's a wormhole there. That's where we're heading. Okay, let's figure this out. Also... This is in Colden space in the south. I also noticed that there's a a trinary system that we can't get to, so maybe it links to that. So that's why I decided to come out here. Let's find out where this goes. I don't know if this is the same as the signal, but there is a wormhole here, so. Oh uh, yeah, this looks like it. it's the Yeah, Mercura. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure that we're okay if we're going we're in invasive stance so let's see what happens let's go through a psionic entity the surveyor has encountered a massive being of pure energy in the mercura system a veritable vortex of psionic forces this entity should only be approached with the utmost caution bafflingly the mercura system itself seems to be entirely devoid of any connection to the subspace hyperlane network whether this entity's presence has severed the system's hyperlane connections or if unexpected subspace fluctuations trapped it in here is unknown one matter is known however the repeating signal we first registered in the echo, uh, echo chromia system appears to originate from here initiating evasive maneuvers all right we have a 
A corrupted avatar psionic entity. I have no idea the power of this thing, but I would estimate, I would just guess, 50, 60k? It's a leviathan. There's not many leviathans remaining. But I'm interested to know what's going on with the mysterious tanker. That's above Mikura 2, a Gaia world. All right. Damn. It's so fun to still have all these kind of things popping up in the galaxy at this stage. All right, we'll have to send something to deal with it. Hopefully our scientists can get out of here. No problem. I told them to go back through. Yeah, they got through. They got out. No problem to them. All right, you know what? You just stay here. All right, let's send a fleet down here immediately. Who are we going to get? At the Opsius station, along with... Titus Opsius Neurilgicus himself. We'll just send this big fleet. I'm gonna just upgrade it right now. Not that it probably needs it, but we'll upgrade that and then we'll send it down to Mercura. I'm gonna send Opsius over to Saul or to Barnard Star. I want him to get to the um, mega shipyard and be the first to up his corvettes by quite a lot if he can. So 119. Let's see what we've. Let's see what we get to when we get fully upgraded here. There's only five shipyards at the Opsia system. One, two, four. Good. I'd be meaning to build more of these things, actually. Make it even more defended. Nice. The battle cruisers all getting their upgrades. Alright, so planetary level two is ready to go. Dragon Breath cannons. I love it. Psionic Blast Torpedoes. <laughs> Alright, good stuff. And we're actually on fast now as well. But I think things are slowing down just because of the amount of pops we have in the game and things like that at this point. Oh yeah, I said I was going to move them out to this planet. So let's try and do that. Resettle. Anyone unemployed? Surprisingly, not really. Two at Alexandria. Actually, yeah, leave that then. That's fine. Alexandria, our resort world. Let's get them... There's actually some housing available, so let's just get them a new commerce megaplex. Make this trade central. Okay, all good. Wow, this fleet is building power so fast. It hasn't even been that long since we did these upgrades. It's just tech is moving so fast now. Our fleet power is just insanely strong. And we can't upgrade the battleships that are in the Pax Romana fleet. So we kind of just... We're at the whim of... Yeah, we got to remove them, basically, and build new ones. Because they could be way more powerful, even than they are. Alright, how, how much longer to go? 73% upgraded. It should be pretty decisive, and then we'll come down there with our science ship. Hopefully survey the system, see what's going on, and maybe take that guy world. Alright, I'm just going to build these stations. And then once they're built, we're going to give them to the Colden. And say, there you go. Have your territory back. No no problem. When the we'll keep... go to war, we observe. Kosher Trade League declared war on the ancient eradicators. Oh, you know what? New we might have to... Discovered. We might have to do that as well. I don't want the Kosher Trade League taking territories out this way. It would be a perfect time to do it. There would be, like, no resistance, I guess. I don't know how easily we'd be able to end that war, though, you know? All right, we'll have to think about that. We should really be doing these things all at the same time. There's no reason to do things one by one. All right, uh, improved star bases. Star base upgrade costs are reduced. Their upgrade speed is increased, and their upkeep... Oh, sorry, their upgrade cost is reduced as well. Nice, yeah, let's get that. Although this one's even cheaper and even better. But we'll get the rare tech first. <laughs> All right, good. Are we upgraded yet? Come on, 84%. Let's speed these this stuff up. This is why we need our mega shipyard. Not only does it give you way more slots to do things at once, but it also increases the speed at which things are done. 430 days. Can we upgrade here, right? Yeah, we can, cool. So Opsius is gonna get his fleet upgraded. We're not gonna use it for a while, but I just wanna see how fast we can do things. 10 shipyards is pretty good. Yeah, just slamming through them. Slamming through them. When this thing is fully upgraded, this whole fleet could upgrade at once. Which would be pretty nice. Okay. 
91%. God, I feel like it's slowed down. It's the, um... The Titan ship is getting its upgrade. Oh, that's all that's left. It's just one Fleet Titan. Upgraded. Construction online. All right, good. Well, that's all fine. That's happening. We almost have the Shutra 2 observation post up and running. And then we're going to take a hit here for a while and get a new member in. Because I think they become a subject or a protectorate immediately. And uh, But their ethics should line up with this pretty well. So that's good. Do we have an envoy not doing anything? Nope. Actually, yeah, what is going on here? There's, we're in recess at the moment. The next thing up is building a better tomorrow, which is going to reduce habitability, but increase alloys from jobs, minerals, and planetary build speeds. That's pretty good. Fleet upgrades applied. All right, the upgrades are done. Let's head towards the psionic entity out here. How long is that going to take? So we're going to take, let's take, follow the journey here. We're going to go straight through the wormhole at Opsius down here, and then basically just climb our way up to the uh, Echochromia system. So it's a bit of a journey. It takes a year to get there. Damn, that is actually long. Whoa, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Man, these um these battle cruisers really like to pull ahead in the initial kind of takeoff. We've already got new upgrades ready for them as well. Alright, we got the next part of the archaeological site done. Lost Planet. The Red Zone. During the first years of colonization, many of the poorer Volnar citizens signed up for off-world employment, hoping to improve their lot in life. As time went on, the industrial zones expanded as co corporations moved outwards to new resource deposits, leaving behind massive abandoned areas full of employed workers and industrial pollution. The situation became far worse after the severance, as shortages of personnel were exacerbated, and a and a severe economic downturn took hold, leaving significant areas of impover impoverished and lawless, ultimately leading to uprisings and the rise of criminal syndicates and warlords in the slums. It appears that several corporate compounds were invaded and looted by a horde of disenfranchised workers, requiring intervention from factions from different parts of the planet and to, to finally bring peace to the region. Keep digging. All right, we should be up to nearly 100 artifacts now. So we could, we could buy two insights to open up those gates. Or, like I keep saying, keep them locked. <laughs> 271 days. This one's definitely coming up next no matter what, pretty much. Good. Oh, yes. Oh, I was going to say, my frame rate's so nice, but it's because it's paused. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is brilliant. Can't wait to see Nemesis really properly established. It's going to take a little while, though, to find the pops to pull off planets. The other thing I've been doing is in the Mechanicum sector, I put down a lot of um, precinct houses just in these different planets to reduce crime because I do plan on just basically taking pops off the planets and there might be a bit of a... People might be a little bit unhappy about that and there might be some crime. So just to deal with it and get ready for that, I've just sort of prepared. But I might do that in between episodes. In between episodes, I'll probably just take like 20% of all the pops off the Mechanicum sector and just keep moving them to Nemesis just to really get that place up and running. Um, Fleet command limit, I guess. Okay, where's that fleet? Could follow the journey for a while. I'm kind of eager to go through these systems and see is there any the planets that I've missed. Discovered. If we don't zoom in, we won't see them. So the ones that we might be able to consecrate. Nothing really, nothing too crazy. What about here? Nope. Construction online. Ooh, what do we have? A coreless planet. The planet has no metal core. The entire planet consists of thick mantle and completely lacks a magnetic field. Creepy. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of asteroids and comets. Enlightenment has been completed. 
The thousands of... There they are. They have their own little territory now. The thousands of scientists and advisors we sent to Shutter 2 have finally completed the arduous task of bringing the local civilization up to an early space age level of technology. Under their new unified government, the aliens have now styled themselves as the Tevadoran Commonwealth, and they've agreed to become our vassals. We've ceded full control of the system and dismantled our observation post as per the conditions of the treaty with them. Now this one's interesting because I do think this would just serve us better to fully integrate them. Because they're just a city-state, they're going to be pathetic, they're going to get a lot of our technologies um, as 80%. So like, or they get an 80% boost to the cost of technologies that we have. So they still have to go through the entire tech tree, they just go through it 80% faster. Which means it's still a long time. So, I don't know, that seems like one I should have to levy to you guys. We obviously can't integrate them for 10 years. But I feel like that's on the cards. So I'll have to ask you guys at some point. Maybe not this episode. Maybe next episode. We'll debate whether or not we integrate them. As we kind of see how we deal with them. So the Pax Romana is now taking a hit to cohesion. Five hit to... Actually, 50 cohesion hit, really. So we have to build that back up. Not a big deal, though. Really, it just slows down our XP gain slightly. Um, as we work towards getting back to level four. No one else has contributed to the fleet, as far as I know. <laughs> and I don't think they ever will, just because I don't think they really can at the economic stages they're at. Alright, we're not far off it, the battle with the psionic entity. And as soon as that battle's done, then, we're going to get all the fleets in position and get ready to attack the... Um, the ancient eradicators in a total war... CB, which means we're going to probably try to take almost everything we can in a straight line across and then what we can in the central core as well. Alright, the Mega Shipyard core has been completed. Excellent. So now we have... Oh my god, that looks amazing. I love the rotating central center. That looks so good. Um, so that's 30 shipyards now. Nice. And then the final part of it... Which we actually can't build. Why not? Yeah, why can't I build that? Oh, there we go. Okay. Nice. So that'll finish it off. And we can still use it. So now there's 30, 30 shipyards that we can build. Alright, so let's go into our ship designer. Let's give Norilgicus one of his... Just an extension to his fleet. So he has 40 Hastadi Cyclas ships waiting to be built. I don't remember doing this, but okay. Oh yeah, I've outfitted small Xenotronium ar armor on almost all the ships. I forgot about that. Because, of course, that's what we obtained from the Vazarin, and it didn't get applied as an automatic upgrade, but it's really good. So it gives you 350 armor hit points. Um, Neutronium armor would have given us 145, so it's three times as powerful. It's pretty crazy. Well, maybe like two and a half times as powerful. Uh, okay. So am I missing anything? So that's level five, for instance. Is there? Because sometimes it goes into like level six and it doesn't show you as a standard upgrade. But I guess we'll just leave these as pretty standard. The Velites are using Joker missiles now. And the Pompeii ships aren't being used at all. They're redundant. All right, cool. So let's... Just increase the amount of these by a lot. 100. 100. Let's go maybe 70, 70, 70. Is that possible? And some people were saying they'd like us to have like a special one that Norilgicus is on. Maybe we'll make a new design that is still... A, I still want it to be a Corvette. Like we could make sure its speed is... So the speed of these ships are what? 301, 301... 299 and 300. So 299, right, is kind of the speed we have to maintain. So we could give them, like, a destroyer with the speed of, like, 299. And then they're, they'd are they all keep up with each other. It wouldn't affect anything. Or a cruiser, maybe. People were saying give him a big, fat cruiser. Could do that. He wouldn't be as evasive, though. Yeah, I kind of wanted to give him just a, a Corvette, but just unique to him. So what could it be... Although we wouldn't be able to spot it. I guess that's the fun part. It's really being able to see it from a distance. Alright, we'll go Destroyer. And then try to give it loads of speed. Um, let's give him the medium weapon. The gunship bow. bow gunship stern. 
Actually, yeah, let's go point defense. Let's give him like crazy amounts of point defense. So we'll do level four protector point defense on one side and then flak artillery on the back. And then let's give him dragon breath cannon. So that kind of kind of complements that a little bit, just a little bit, not really. But so our speed is two eighty eight. There, now he's faster than the entire fleet. I'd have to match his um, behavior with the others as well. I'll have to check that out. All right, let's see. His speed is better, but I haven't given him any shields and stuff yet. So let's see what happens. Yeah, he's still good. Okay, great. The Opsius class. The design doesn't have enough power. Oh shit. Okay, so his speed is still really good. His evasion is pretty good. And that's his unique ship. Sorry I took so long with that, but had to be done. Opsius. Okay, 82, 83, 83, and 1. There we go. And we'll leave his home station. It's just going to stay here for now. I don't know if we can actually select it as the shipyard. I don't think we can. But if we put him at Tiberium, which is next over, I'm pretty sure all the ships will just get made here. 39,000 alloys. You know what? I think I might actually wait then until this is maxed out. Because then we can just like really see it at full production, which would be cool. Alright. That took a while. Sorry about that. Our ships are two systems over. Once we get into the system, defeat the psionic entity. We're then going to wait for the shipyard to be built. And then go to war with the ancient eradicators. And get all our other fleets in position. So we can start doing that now, really. God, the upgrade cost on these things is crazy. When the aliens go to war, we observe. Alright, we can start upgrading those ones now. These corvettes might as well upgrade as well. And, uh, yeah. I don't think I'll... Yeah, I guess we could use the Federation fleet as well. So we'll put the Federation fleet out at the front line in the Valdenor territory. Great. All right, Senate's now in session. War declared between Balmacossa and the Ancient Eradicator. So that's these guys then. Looks like they're... Oh, shit. They're just pushing straight in, are they? I didn't get to see them, so they might be in here now. Because I believe they're allied with the Valon Cluster. Upgrades. I want to say. Yeah. Mega structure upgraded. Hey, the Ringworld sections are done. Awesome. Let's check them out. Boom. Oh, yeah. Waiting for us to land on them now. So that's one and two, and then we have to do three and four. So let's go upgrade in progress. No, it's not. There we go. All right, so we've got both of these colonies can be founded right now. Colonize. This one's going to be called uh, Corinth. And this one's going to be called Sparta. So people were saying, like, why don't you name them, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be like New Sparta, New Corinth? Everything will be named New in that case, or Nova. Um, so I've just decided to forego using Nova before everything. Like, we get it. Um, I think it's fine. <laughs> I don't think anyone's really going to be confusing when they're talking about it, you know, in, in common conversation on Terra. Oh, I'm going to Corinth t today. Really, which one? You know, I don't think it's going to be, like, that difficult for people to kind of wrap their head around. Alright, just sell some of that. Damn, the archaeological dig is continuing. Alright, our ship is here. We'll go for the combat first. 
Actually, no, we'll read the we'll read the thing first and then end on the combat. The Constitution Hall. Our continued research on the lost planet has uncovered the seat of the first united planetary government. After a prolonged period of strife on the planet, several major factions were able to broker a deal and formalize the peace agreement. It appears that most factions on the planet, ranging from remainders of the corporate power structure to former government agencies, administer national colonies to red, excuse me, red zone warlords, found the term satisfactory. All right, sorry, I read that really wrong. It just means all the different types that were like, you know, the corporate powers, the red zone warlords, etc. They all came to terms. And they found them satisfactory. All right. The newly founded, uh, formed United Planetary Government chose to retrofit a massive corporate arcology at the outskirts of Red Zone, renaming it Constitution Hall to house most of governmental agencies. Uh, for a few years, it appears the situation was stable and Volnars, tired of endless conflict, worked together to rebuild their civilization away from their homeworld. After that, all records stopped. Keep digging. Oh, we removed two districts from the planets doing that, apparently. Oh, no, 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 no. We cleared districts That's as we dig further. What I hope to do as well is connect a hyperlane from here out to there and also connect a hyperlane from Astain to here. Um, people are like, oh, you know, gateways are better than hyperlanes. It's like, it's true, but this is in its own, like, kind of sector. We can include it in the sector if we connect it via hyperlane. Same goes for Tenrithin. This can be connected to the Sol, the Terra sector if we connect it with the hyperlane so there's sure it might not be efficient in terms of using it just for travel but it's efficient in other ways um especially since it's a relic world we could focus it on science or something <clears throat> if we don't upgrade it elegate insight let's get it all right we're getting close to that now okay let's go deal with this psionic entity hopefully we've enough 132,000 nona orphidius is on the case I'm oh, sorry, I didn't actually travel through. <laughs> travel to Mercura. Just before we do, we have touched down on Hellas, Corinth, and Sparta. So it's going to take about a year and a half to set up. And I'm actually... So what do we get? We get city segments, commercial segments, where merchants produce trade and amenities, artisans turn minerals into consumer goods, clerks produce trade and amenities. Oh, wow. So it does a bunch of things. That's really cool. Commercial segments. Oh, I like that a lot. Researchers turn consumer goods into science and then agriculture for food. Oh, wow. Okay. So it does pretty much... Oh, that's really interesting. So we don't get any minerals or energy from these things, but the habitats, we can get energy. But minerals seems to be only for mining planets, and it seems also maybe the matter decompressor. So that's the thing you're going to be short on if you're trying to convert everything into consumer goods, into alloys, and so on. Okay, good to know. Right, let's go check out the combat. I almost looked away. Blasting its shields. We've already just removed its entire shields, and wow. That was it. Well, that was absolute overkill, if I've ever seen it. It was like two blasts from the arc emitters, I think, and then just a stream of plasma weapons that visually haven't reached there, but under the hood they have. Um, was it the perdition beam as well? Perdition beams. Wow. Well, with the destruction of the malevolent psionic entity that had been sealed in the Mercura system, our science vessels should be able to safely explore the unique area. So sorry that it was so anticlimactic. <laughs> I thought we'd have a battle for at least a few seconds. We just shredded it, basically. Oh god. Just pure energy left behind. With no containment. Now it's gone. Nothing to even study or anything. Just... That's it. Although I guess we get the system, right? So let's find out about the mysterious tanker.
Damn, I keep clicking that. There we go. All right, well, our sign ship is here now, so we can go through things. Oh, maybe we found... What do we got here? A shrouded world. Interesting. The Leviathan defeated. Ancient eradicators have vanquished an ancient threat in the distant Sinagawa system. Oh, my God. There was still more left. A stellar devourer. Corpse. Oh, these are the things that devour stars, obviously. Oh, crap. And that's pretty close by as well. I didn't realize there were still Leviathans around. Because I didn't notice any, like, pockets of space. I guess that was one right there, though. And two Leviathans dying at the same time. Might be able to get out to that corpse before they do anything with it. I don't know. So what do we got? Gas giants. I guess we don't know their anomalies till we search them. How fast do we research now? Really fast. 10 second or 10 percent per day all right that's gonna have to be it for this episode little anticlimactic on the psionic battle there but next episode we're gonna be waging war with the ancient eradicators hopefully cleaning up some of the border border gore that they've created taking much of the central sector for ourselves for the core and then also kind of re-establishing the veldener zealots territories as well as that we should be completing the Mega shipyard, sorry, wrong place. Mega shipyard here at Bernard Star. That way we'll have 50 shipyards slamming out corvettes for our boy Nerilgicus to use. And actually, while we're here, let's just do it. The final thing I wanted to achieve was there's a planetoid, Ceres. In the Sol system, we're going to consecrate it to Vesta, giving plus 20 liter lifespan. Something like that. <laughs> and uh, done. So it's just a little planetoid that's been here since the beginning. But I was kind of hoping to find another one that was maybe more interesting. There's probably, we probably have. But it's kind of nice to name this one anyways. People were saying it actually suits it quite a lot. Even though it is called Ceres, I guess. Um, but yeah, that extra leader lifespan now means that, you know, people <laughs> like Nerilgicus might never die. <laughs> um, you can look at it, I think, in the leader screen. It's a little immersion breaking, but we'll do it just for... People who are interested, I guess. Admirals. For instance, he's 122. While he while he is under 150, his chances of dying are zero. So if we keep extending lifespan for a long time, you know, he's going to be with us for at least another 28 years. And maybe even longer. As long as he doesn't die in combat. So he's been around for quite a long time. You know, since the first wars of the Nerilga and stuff. It's kind of crazy that he's still going. And he doesn't look a day over 30. All right, that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back in two days on Wednesday with the next one. <laughs>